Hey, this video is on eigenvalue inequalities, and I'm going to do several videos here. And this is all sort of background research on something new that I have been uh, investigating. Um, it'll be several um, parts, so they're not each one too long. And I'm a little undecided on whether I want to, at the end of this, publish the result in a manuscript and then post to YouTube or just post it to YouTube but either way it's pretty exciting new research so let's jump right in and <clears throat> the first theorem we're going to show is that any uh, symmetric matrix was let's say dimension M by M um, it has real eigenvalues and real eigenvectors can be uh, found or you know that they exist so the proof is let's assume that our eigenvalue and eigenvectors are uh, complex not real and um, that means that you know this is the relationship for eigenvalues and eigenvectors and if we plug in our assumption that they're they're complex eigenvectors and eigenvalues we get this now pre-multiplying by its uh, complex conjugate of, of this uh, eigenvector we get this and you do that to both sides then multiply through so that's you know y times i a times y which is this and then y times a times z you get this and then you just do that for each of those the eigenvalue we keep out front then this um, here these two values cancel because if a is symmetric then the transpose of this is equal to the this and I mean if this is a uh, it's a scalar so it has to be if this is symmetric those two are equal so they cancel and the I squared is was negative one times negative you get a positive so the left hand side is reduces to this and then the right hand side again this cancels with that they're just scalar multiples um, so you're left with this expression here So then, if we note that the left-hand side is real, and if we look at that, there's there's no there's nothing complex on this side here. So that means this side has to be real, I have to equal. And if this side is real, the only complex number or the, you know part is this. So that implies that the B or beta has to be zero. So, and if the beta is zero, that means the eigenvalues are real. So that's a quick little proof to, that the eigenvalues have to be real. So now let's find an eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue uh, alpha. So we just showed that alpha has to be real but this relationship still has to hold and uh, let's assume that, that the uh, eigenvector is complex so we get this relationship and then multiply through we get this now if uh, if we let y not be zero and let z be zero then this still has to hold right so a y has to equal alpha y well that's the definition of of eigenvalue vector so y is an eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue and y is is real so there exists an eigenvector that's real that's associated with that real eigenvalue okay 
And we'll look at one more theorem here. And that is if A is symmetric, we have the ordered eigenvalues where lambda 1 is biggest and lambda n is smallest. Then for m not equal to 0, this inequality holds. And the, the minimum can be achieved. So the minimum of this over all values, you actually, you know, you can find it to equal that. In the same way for the max, that you the, the maximum value is this. So what we'll prove is this inequality, and then we'll show that the the min and the max can be achieved. So the proof is this. So let's let uh, uh, this be the spectral decomp of A, where the uh, vectors or the columns are the orthonormal eigenvectors and actually we can just say that they're normalized vectors but and then because it's symmetric it's also orthonormal but we'll just say orthonormal and that the the uh, this is a, a diagonal matrix with the diagonal elements of of the eigenvalues and because these are orthonormal that means that this relationship has to be the identity matrix so let's let X be an element of RM and then that means that X can be represented as a linear combination of these eigenvectors that's just by definition so now let's look at this relationship here um, here because um, X has to be represented as a linear combination of these eigenvectors, we substitute that in for each X. Okay, and then um, in this step, we we tra take the transpose through and take the transpose there, but we let A be its spectral decomp position right here. Well, this piece in the middle is the identity matrix, so we just get this piece. And then this uh, X transpose X goes to the identity, and this X transpose X goes to the identity, so we just get this. Ooh, and that should be a capital um, lambda. I think that's a capital lambda, and then not A. And then based upon that, that it's this relationship, that it's the sum of the y squareds, and this is the sum of lambda i, lambda i squared. But let's look at this nu numerator here, specifically. So that's this piece here. Now, each lambda i is different, but if we replace it, each lambda i by its maximum, say lambda 1, then we get this relationship. Then, then this sum has to be bigger than this. If you take that lambda one in, instead of put using the different lambdas, we just use the biggest, then this has to be bigger than that. And at the same way, if we take the smallest lambda and replace all these other lambdas, then we get this relationship. So it has to be smaller. And then if we divide everything by the sum of the yi squareds, we just get this piece, and we get this, and then we just get lambda 1. But this piece here is the result that we were looking for. So this is between the smallest and largest uh, eigenvalues. So now let's, let's, just, let's show that um, we can achieve the min and the max, and we do that by let the x in this quantity be the eigenvector associated with the largest eigenvalue and then we get this quantity well this right here by definition is lambda 1 x1 and this right here is 1 because it's an orthonormal uh, vector the sum it, this is 1 and then this constant comes out and then that sums to 1 again we just get lambda 1 and we can achieve the minimum if we let it be the eigenvector associated with the smallest eigenvalue 
and the same relationship holds and then that we get the smallest one and that we've uh, uh, we've shown that it is limited by this by the eigenvalues and it actually achieves the extreme values so that's all I have for today hope you enjoyed it there's gonna be two three four m more videos uh, if you like it please click like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye